Good morning, Sherry Tomczyk here. If you don't know me, then I'll introduce myself. I am the founder of Plan A Long-Term Care Staffing and Recruitment, and we are a franchise model that is blowing up all over Ontario, and what we do is we look after the long-term care sector. Now, as I mentioned, I am a franchisor, and my job is to make sure that our franchisees, our Plan A owners across Ontario, are successful. Now, many of these people are coming to us with, with business experience, but many of them are not. And I like to give them some advice that will help them through the early startup time of their business. And I'm not talking about the regular financial advice. I'm not talking about marketing advice or growth advice or operations advice. What I'm talking about is advice that can help them through the early stages when they're really not 100% confident in themselves as entrepreneurs or in what they do. So what I've done is I've compiled a list of some of the best advice that was ever given to me, and I'm going to tell you about that in today's vlog. The first thing that I would like to say, and I looked at my list there, sorry, I do have a list, is that you cannot be the expert in everything. So I learned that pretty quickly. Uh, when you start your business, you need you, you wear many, many hats. You're the technician. You're right in the business taking care of the day-to-day. -day. You're the manager. You are the accountant. You're the lawyer. You are the bookkeeper. You are your, your own marketing exec. You are everything. So my advice to you would be to really understand what you're comfortable doing, also known as your strengths. So for me, I love the marketing. I love sitting down with our VP of marketing, Megan, and coming up with the ideas that make people turn their eyeballs in their directions. I love thinking of ways to get people engaged in what we're doing. And my biggest hope is that one day we'll come up with something so creative that it has no chance to do anything but go totally viral. So for me, marketing it is, growth, um, team building, um, hiring the right people and inspiring them in the vision. Um, I, well, you know what, that's a pretty good, pretty good example of the things that I know I'm really good at. You know what I'm not good at? Bookkeeping. Bookkeeping. So, so right away, I sourced bookkeeping out of my business. Um, another thing that I don't do very good is read contracts and really understand what that means. And at the beginning, when I started my business, when I had no money at all, I was pretending to be a lawyer all the time to the detriment of my business. So now, if I need to read a contract, fix a contract, write a contract, that stuff goes off to my lawyer. So again, you cannot be the expert in everything. The second thing I would say is run into your fires. Now, any one of our owners, any one of my staff have heard me say that. You know, when a client is really, really upset at something you've done, it the first thing you want to do is hide, right? You're worried about the client losing um, faith in you. You're worried about the client not using your service anymore. Well, what I say is the second you know something isn't going right, pick up the phone and call the client. Don't be afraid to apologize and be accountable and let them know that you will do your best to make sure that that never happens again. What I find that does is it keeps our clients really, really um, trusting, trusting of me and what I'm trying to do for them. So again, run into your fires. The third bit of advice I give all of our owners is not to forget about self-care. Now, when you're running a business and wearing those many hats I already talked about and your phone's ringing all the time and you're responding to everyone's emails, the last thing on you, you want to put on your plate is self-care. Or actually, it's not that you don't want to put it on your plate. It's that it's the first thing that leaves leaves the list of, of important things to do because everything else sort of chumps that. What I can tell you from experience is that if you don't put your self-care first, it's your business that's going to suffer. So what I would suggest is making your best attempt to get really good rest. Eating food that gives you energy, eating for energy, because as you get busy, what you're going to find is you may even actually forget to eat meals sometimes. But if you've filled yourself up with some healthy and lean protein and some fruit and some vegetables before, it will last a little bit longer for you. So you're not just diving into that big bag of chips in the evening. Um, 
coaching. So I have been in coaching and I go coat to coaching often since my business was just an idea. Having a place to dump the noise in my head has been a really great way for me to be able to come up with even better ideas, clear the noise, silence the, the hamster, and really come up with some of the best ideas of my life. And going for walks, getting some exercise, um, those kind of things uh, that look um, that, that help you to look after yourself. Sometimes when I say self-care, people think I mean go home on the weekend, don't do anything, don't have a drink, don't stay up late. That's not what I mean. What I mean is whatever makes you feel, feel really good about yourself, do that. The next thing I'm going to say is that shy people do starve. And some people might disagree, especially those that are a little bit more introvert. And what I mean by that is if you are introvert and you're afraid to get yourself out of there, then you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone to get your business going. Now, that means taking the amount of networking opportunities you have up a notch. And you know, initially, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be tough. I started off plan A and I was doing five, seven, sometimes 10 networking events a month, just trying to get my myself out there. And initially, I would sort of stand there and, and not even introduce myself to people. And that's when I visited Toastmasters for, for the first time. So after spending a couple of years in Toastmasters, saying a few speeches, really taking on some leadership roles, it made it easier for me to get in front of someone, put my hand out, give them my card, and let them know who I was and what my vision was about. Now, even though I wasn't really comfortable when I started, I did push myself out of that comfort zone and made that happen. Now, if you see me out in public, chances are I'm in your face. And that's because... I realized the importance of getting myself past that hump of being shy and letting people know that my message is, is important. The fourth thing I'd like to say is, actually the fifth thing I'd, I'll start all over. The fifth thing I'd like to say is that if you learn to listen, then you'll listen to learn. Now, when I started planning, I was blah, 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 blah. I was talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And I had not really honed in on what I could learn from listening. What I realize now is if you're always talking, you're never learning anything. Now, when I'm teaching and educating a franchisee about how to run their business, I am absolutely talking the whole entire time because what I know is what you need to know. But when I'm meeting with someone for the first time and I'm discussing long-term care or senior care or staffing in the future or sustainable health care, I barely, barely talk. I just take it all in like a sponge so I can take that information and use it in the best way that works for my business. So that is my five words or my five keys of advice today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I absolutely love sharing what I've learned over the last eight years with you. If you have any questions or comments, comment below. Make sure to keep watching our vlogs and reading our blogs. Have a fantastic day.